Welcome to this tutorial we are going to be doing together today on the abdomino pelvic regions and quadrants. So I have this woman up on the screen here and if we remember back to our tutorial on cavities, we learned that the abdomino pelvic cavity was the large cavity below your lungs and heart which make up your thoracic cavity. But if someone comes to you and says they have a patient with pain in their abdomino pelvic cavity, you are probably just going to stare blankly at them until they're a bit more specific. And that's why within the medical profession we have a naming system for the areas within this cavity. So as I've just written, it's a large cavity and must be divided into segments. So the first naming system we're going to have is the quadrants, which there are four of. And quadrants are used much more by practitioners, so uh, hospital workers and uh, doctors and it's the abdomino pelvic cavity split into these four segments that you see on the screen here. So we partition it vertically at the mid sagittal line and horizontally at the umbilicus or where your belly button is and they form uh, right angles between those two lines. So we've got passed through the umbilicus at right angles and I'll just show this here as well on the drawing. So you can see these right angles forming here where the lines intersect. And these quadrants are going to be quite easy to remember. It's as simple as a right upper quadrant. So R-U-Q right upper quadrant. L-U-Q for left upper quadrant. So we have the left upper quadrant here. And I'm sure you can probably guess already, RLQ standing for right lower quadrant. And of course, we're going to have an LLQ for our left lower quadrant. And these four subdivisions are going to help us when we're reading a uh, report or something similar. We can take a much more educated guess of where the pain or where the symptoms are coming from when we use these quadrants. But further than this, we can divide the abdomino pelvic cavity into nine regions. And the nine regions are going to be used a lot more by uh, anatomists or students to help uh, know a bit better exactly what organ or what structure is where within this uh, cavity. So we can see the nine regions here divided by two horizontal or transverse and two vertical or parasagittal lines and it looks a little bit like a checkerboard or a noughts and crosses board. And the first of these nine divisions or regions is the umbilical region. And the umbilical region is right in the center here, so where you would find your belly button. Next, we're going to find our epigastric region will be above or more superior to our umbilical region. So just above here in the middle. And below our umbilical or inferior to our umbilical region, we have our hypogastric region, which we can also call our pubic region. So right here, our pubic or hypogastric region. Next, we've got these six segments on the side, and they all have the uh, same names just divided into right and left. So we'll have a right and left iliac or inguinal region. So we've got the right iliac here, and our left iliac on this side here. And just remembering as well that anatomically speaking, when we're uh, talking about right and left, we're always talking about the person that we're looking at. So the right side of this person's body and the left side of this person's body. Not the uh, right and left of your eye. It's the person you're looking at. So next we'll have our right and left lumbar, which is either side of our umbilical region. So right and left lumbar regions here. And our last two regions are going to be our right and left hypochondriac. And the hypochondriac name just signifying the lower or false ribs that are going to be in that region and the con being the abbreviation we usually use for cartilage. 
So the right hypochondriac and left hypochondriac right here. So we have our four quadrants and nine regions now. And before we go any further, I want you to have a bit of a think about what organs you would find in those quadrants and regions. And then we'll have a quick talk about it together. All right, so I've got this picture up now of a person's internal organs or internal viscera of their abdominopelvic cavity. So we'll have a quick look at what we can find where. So starting with our right upper quadrant, we're going to see the liver, a portion of our stomach and also our gallbladder. So the gallbladder being just inferior to your liver. The left upper quadrant is mainly going to be your uh, stomach, also a portion of the liver and sometimes a small amount of your large intestine as well or your colon. And in our right lower quadrant, we'll see the small and large intestines. And I'll just put on here as an example, a, a common cause of pain within that quadrant would be your appendix. So appendicitis would be right lower quadrant pain. And our left lower quadrant, again, just the small and large intestines, but the other side. And if you've studied the internal organs a little bit already, you'll know that we can subdivide them far more than what we already have based on the exact uh, segment. And you'll also notice that with the uh, first line that I have here on the quadrants, the horizontal line or the transverse line, it wasn't quite on the umbilicus. The umbilicus would be a little bit lower. And I'll use that point to say within uh, every single person, there can be a small or even a large degree of variation where you will find all of these organs, but use this as a guideline. So within the umbilical region, you would expect to find the small and large intestines, which you can still find here, and just a small portion of the stomach, but you can see a larger portion within this person here. Now, epigastric is usually just going to be our stomach and maybe a portion of the liver. And our pubic region will be our lower intestines and the urinary bladder, which will be at the base of the pubic region there. Now with our right and left iliac, I'll just point out that you can see on the right here, the cecum and the appendix, which will be parts of our colon. And on the left side, you can see the sigmoid colon, which is another segment of our large intestine. Now within our right and left lumbar, we're usually just going to see the ascending and descending portions of our large intestine or colon. So on the right lumbar here, we have our ascending colon and left lumbar, we have our descending colon. Now for our last two segments or regions, our right and left hypochondriac, we're going to see the liver on the right and we'll see a large portion of the diaphragm on the left. I'll just draw that up here as well. The diaphragm extends are further down on the left side because it's pushed upward by the liver on the right. So within our left hypochondriac region, we'll see much more of that diaphragm. So now that we know all of the structures and organs that we're going to find within our quadrants and regions, we can have a bit of a better idea of what someone is talking about when they say to you uh, right upper quadrant or left lower quadrant or epigastric region or anything like that. And remember that between every single person there is variation in where their organs will be sitting, but usually uh, not too much. And if you use the umbilical segment as the reference point or the central point where your belly button is, you usually won't go too wrong with guessing where all of the organs are going to be situated. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.